All right, guys. So our next project for the day is gouging these ears off of this small bucket. Now, a customer had these water jetted and they cleaned up these deals here for the pins. Those will be solidly welded in there. But for something a little different, I figured I'd try gouging with a Lincoln SA200. Now I've had this old thing since, oh man, maybe late 90s. Good old machine. Now there's a lot of uh, questions people say, you shouldn't gouge with a SA200, it's not good for them. Well, it's a welding machine. That's what they're for. And so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we'll ha have to settle that here to see if this works, right? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well then we'll find out because I'll have a burnt up machine. <laughs> And actually, it'll be fine. But uh, either way, I had already fired it up because it had been sitting a long time and, you know, it's had difficulties idling up and stuff. The brush has been sitting, you know, so hopefully it'll work out well. Um, so let's get after it. We're going to get these guys off, gouge these guys off. Pretty straightforward uh, job. Nothing really too tough. It's just a little bit of gouging here and there and then welding. A little gouging, a little gluing. So actually, we're going to stick weld this thing also. I haven't stick welded with this thing in, oh man, two, three years, I guess, even before I got here on YouTube. So it'd be nice to get the feel for this machine again. They, they weld a little bit differently, which is kind of cool. So we'll give that a shot and see how this works. So let's get after it. to clean off the whole thing uh, the paint off of it the art gouger would take care of that but one of the main goals is just so i can have a starting point to make the ground or the contact so here we go Before I get too far, uh, you can see that there, uh, that I found a separation line. I'm a little bit off here, I need to go a little bit higher. But I forgot to mention the settings. Now I've got it in the number three section here, the selector, and then this up to the 100%. So I'm really not using the full capacity of the welding machine. So it's not that, not really, so it's not that hard on it, right? So it does okay, so long as you have a nice steady, arc you know, it would be very similar to that of stick welding nice steady arc not as much sputter it'll work fine so let me see if i can find that separation line and then i'll bring you guys in closer with the camera or with the uh, lens Okay, so I did a little more digging and I found that the separation line is actually a little higher than expected. So I was actually digging too deep. I was digging too far into that parent metal. If you look at this here, it shows to be a lot higher. It's about another 3 16 higher. So I'll make the adjustment and then start just gouging on this top upper edge up here. That way I don't uh, gouge too far into this these ears because these can be reused. 
So if I do it right, it'll be a lot cleaner, less fill for the next guy who has to fill or reattach these to something else. So things are looking good. Okay, so it's looking good. If you notice, I jumped up to 5 16 carbon rods because I ran out of quarter inch. And people ask me all the time what, what amperage I use. Usually on quarter inch, I go up to like 210, uh, 200, maybe 215. And this, I don't exactly know what it's set at. <laughs> it says 190 and then 100 percent. So. It works now it is a little sticky in that it's hard to start sometimes especially in these tight corners i don't know if you saw it, some of that it was a little tough but once you get going it works out pretty good now i could probably turn it up a little bit because it is uh, giving me a little bit of difficulties but again you just want a nice smooth steady arc as, as possible at least as smooth as possible that way it comes out nice and clean it doesn't hurt the machine from a lot of jolt on off on off you know the sudden jolt of the the conductivity I guess that's the right word either way so let me finish this up and get that camera for you here in a minute
Okay, so that came off all right. Uh, looks like I could smooth that out a little bit. I did get into the parent metal a little bit, but if you don't tell, I won't tell. So it'll be fine. Uh, things are looking good. Now I can get you a better view of this with the gouger. These corners are pretty tough. They're hard to get into the corner, so I think that's what was holding me up here. Either way, almost there. Keep going, then we'll break out the grinder and make it pretty. All right. This is a real point of view. I'm putting my arms around the camera. <laughs> Okay. Eek. <laughs> Looks like I chewed it off, right? Either way, nothing a grinder can't fix. So things are looking good. This, oh, here you go. Here's a model number of the bucket. Little bitty guy. I mean, it's only a 12 inch bucket. But either way, uh, so I got these off. Look all right. We'll find out how much I got into the parent metal after I start grinding it here in a second. So I know watching grinding is boring. It's all get out because even I fast forward to that stuff. So uh, let me grind it up and see what the uh, finished cleanup looks like. And then we can go from there. Hopefully it's in decent shape. I do see some spots that I got a little aggressive with it, but uh, nothing a little, little paint can't fix. So, all right, grinding. All right, so this is uh, about as clean as I'm gonna get it. You got a little undercut spots there, but yeah, it should be fine. Uh, so the next step would be to put these guys, whoa, that was loud, in position like that, get the correct spacing. 
and uh, weld them up. Customer got a good, you know, got a good pattern. Did really well, so it turned out nice. We got a little bit of a fill gap there, but as I said before, if you can step across it, you can fill it. So we can step across that. That's no problem. And uh, let's get that that spacing uh, that he's uh, set for me and weld them up. It should be pretty nice. Uh, a little bit of stick welding would be nice. A pretty easy little job. Okay. Oh, you hear that noise in the background? That sounds like an excavator that's being used in a fashion where it's not intended. <laughs> I hear a lot of banging or a lot of something. <laughs> Either way, might have to go over there and give them a card. All right, we'll see you guys. Uh, let's do the next step. All right, so we moved these things inside just to get them out of the wind. And so um, next step is to put these ears on it. Like that. Customer giving me a spacing block for our, from the other things that I have done for them. They've come out in these videos as well sometime back. But anyway, that goes there. Next guy goes up here. And so I'll clamp those together, make sure that the pins go in there correctly, and then we'll start welding it up. So let's get that done. Now that I got those tacked up, well, somewhat tacked up, they're semi-stitch welded there. Uh, one of the issues here was that this piece was cut a little bit too much, so I had a bit of a gap. So instead of struggling with stick welding it, I fill in that first little root pass. Doesn't hurt anything. And so I can weld this with MIG or I can weld this with stick, but I hadn't stick welded anything in a long time, so I figured I'd give that a shot and show you guys some of the, the patterns that I use as far as uh, weaving or running stringers. And hopefully I can catch some of that on this uh, on the camera. So uh, that's the next step. Uh, just from tacking, this thing got plenty warm, so it's good enough to start. Especially with stick welding, it doesn't really care. It'll it'll weld darn near anything. So that's the next step. Let's get this welded up.
Okay, so we got these two done, uh, the outsides at least. That's why I put these tacks here to keep them from spreading out. And also, this, you know, offset going around a corner kind of helps hold things in place. So that's good. It seemed like it held together well. Uh, I'm a little out of practice on this machine, but you know, it works. Uh, just as they say, relax, it's not falling off. <laughs> uh, this will definitely not fall off. And so to make things easier on myself, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lay this bucket on its side and just run a single pass in there. This here was a single pass as well, but that's roughly about a 3 16 quarter inch weld. And you know, if you calculate the whole inches, you know, all the way around, that's a very strong weld. So there's no need to put multiple passes. That'd just be overkill. And it's very similar to the singular, singular weld pass that they put on with the MIG. One pass or hold it is fine. You don't have to go crazy. So let me lay that over. Uh, I'll weld these guys around, around there. Then weld on that inside. And this thing's almost done. So. Okay, let's get after it. <laughs> you know what's interesting is it probably was going to be a lot easier welding it laying down, but that's all right. It works. Well, it looks like we finished this up. Nice little project, worked out well. Thought I'd uh, do a little stick welding with it, so I'm glad I was able to use that old SA200. And, you know, a little out of practice, but that's all right. And each machine takes a little while to get used to, and I'm glad I'm getting back at it. So, some of these welds, eh, it'll do. And as I say, relax, it's not falling off. So, it won't fall off. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something from the video. All that's next is uh, throw a little paint and we can ship it. Call the customer. All right, well, thank you guys very much and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.